When I saw the first prototype of the new Cinovate Moco at NAB, I had to smile and think to myself, what a great idea. Combining the quality, flexibility, portability of the Atlas 30 with the motion control capabilities of Ditto Gear's Omni system was pure genius. For a photographer like me who shoots and teaches on location, this could be perfect. And what was really cool was to see how simply yet effectively Robert and Patrick over at Ditto Gear implemented this kit. Utilizes the same servo motor as the Omni slider, so it's quiet, it's controllable, silky smooth bearings. Look at the size of that belt. Look at the size of the teeth. There is absolutely no backlash when suddenly changing directions or ramping up or ramping down. Still retains all the great features of the Atlas 30, including the kips, which you can now use for hanging cords and the Omni controller. But it has now the RJ45, which is the interface to the Omni controller. Now, I've talked about the Omni controller before. I love it. I, I've been using it for over a year. It has all the forms of motion control you could want. Free ride video, motion recording and playback, time lapse, drive, shoot, drive, and continuous. So, if you can dream it up, you can do it. I did some simple tests at first. Straight and level, and... We had asked Dennis Woods, uh, the CEO of Cinovate, to come by, but he was really busy, so he sent his uh, look-alike stunt double, Sven, along. <laughs> and as it turned out, it worked out better because Sven's got better eyelashes, and that's what this test is about. You know, just start and stop and watch the eyelashes. See if there's any shake or movement, If it how it ramps up, how it ramps down. I mean... The real-time speed control and dampening of the Omni controller work just as well here as they do on the Omni slider. Now, the instructions say to put the motor end up, so naturally I put the motor end down for my first escalator shots and just to see what would happen. Now, I've got a fairly light load, uh, but still, starting, stopping, going up and down, there's no lag, there's no strain or stress and abrupt starts and stops are fine. I mean, look at those eyelashes. That's smooth. You can't ask for anything better than that. So I went ahead and flipped it to the quote-unquote proper orientation and came up to see, well, I got a little more vertical on this one. And as you can see, Dennis's, I mean, excuse me, Sven's eyelashes is the same way. This is great. I've only got a D600 and I think an 85 on there with a small HD DP6. So it's a fairly light load. But even still, at that angle and with all that hanging off, you would think there would be some shake. But that big sled of the Atlas 30 with all the bearings it's got, I think it's got four rollers with 15 bearings each, give you as smooth a ride as you can ask for. So I decided to push it a little bit. Let's give it a, a real top-heavy, off-balance load. We've got a DP6, a Nikon D600 with a 24 to 70, a follow focus, a 15 millimeter rod system on top of an Acrotec ball head, and we're shooting in time lapse. Okay, bound to be some shake here, and it would be understandable. But much to my delight. Natasha looks perfect. I mean, the slide is smooth. Every little hair and eyelash. Um, look at her hat, the front bill of her hat. It's silky. Okay, I'm going to push the limits here. I'm going to see if I can't do this uh, with the newest member of our test team here, Fred. I threw a 55 millimeter micro lens on it and figured, okay, this will magnify anything, any little shake, quiver, hesitation, backlash, 
any faults with the system. But as you can see, um, Fred's just hanging in there. He's steady. You can see the little hairs, the facets in his eyes, the fuzz on his nose perfectly. I mean, this is impressive. But we're still looking for the limits. Uh, getting comfortable and confident with the unit here in the studio under control conditions is going to make my life out there in the real world a lot easier and make my shooting a lot more efficient. So as long as Fred was sticking around, I decided to put an 85-1.4, a nice Zeiss lens on there. It's my sharpest lens, and add an extension tube to it. I figured if anything was going to show any little hesitation, any motor vibration or anything, that combination would. But as you can see, Fred looks great. I mean, look at his left eye. You can even see the light vibrating off of his one of the facets. It's really weird. I wasn't able to re reproduce that again. But he's a little dusty from hanging around. Starts stops, direction changes, not a quiver. I'm impressed. This has got to be a combination of the sled with all of its bearings, the servo motor being smooth, um, and the chrome steel rods um, that it comes with are really you know, over spec for the load that I'm carrying. I'm, I'm usually under nine pounds, and the rods alone are what looks like they're coming in around 10 pounds. That's overkill for the, for the load I normally have. It's more for Aries and Reds and, you know, the high-end cameras. So I decided to see if I couldn't get by with a different set of uh, 5 8 6061 aluminum rods that I had from another project. Now, those come in at a little over 2.5 pounds, you know. I had both solid and the eighth inch wall ones, and I put a tent pole, a fiberglass tent pole in one, and that turned out to be just as good as the solid. And that seven pounds you save is enough to offset the Ditto Gear brick, the seven amp hour battery, which only comes in at five pounds, but it'll last you for days. These batteries are incredible. At the four foot configuration I've got it set up at, everything, including the battery and control and everything, fits in my 60 inch Cinevate bag. I, I still love that bag, been using it for years. It's great, okay? Pack it up, roll it away, boom. I'm on location and shooting, recording moves. Being able to record the motion and play it back at will means that I'll be ready if something starts to happen, like, say, this utility barge comes down in. Can nice slide in, it shows up. Another nice thing about that I've discovered about this is the fact that it's weatherproof. Um, every once in a while we get rain in Seattle, and if you can't shoot in the weather, then you don't work. I have a little awning off the side of my van and being able to pop out, set it up, stay dry, and not worry about the humidity or moisture or anything else affecting it has been really great. The series of tests and trials have given me a comfort level. Um, I know I can rely on the MoCo now to give me consistent, predictable results. So I can basically set it and forget it. I can be teaching a class, set it, let it run through while I work with my students, and know that time after time after time, I'm going to get the same predictable quality results, which is exactly what I would expect from companies like Cinevate and Ditto Gear. This becomes especially important when I'm uh, getting a little more creative and doing compositing of video and different time-lapse sequences. The ability to motion record and play back with millimeter accuracy becomes very, very important to me. One kind of unexpected benefit of its 
compact nature and the fact that I can basically leave it set up as we're driving from location to location is that we can grab these little short time lapses that previously would be, oh God, we're just going to do a, a shorty and is it really worth setting up all the equipment? And you know, well, it is. And it's getting easier and easier. So adding to my library of short time-lapse clips has become second nature now. As we drive along, we look, we're ready to pop out, we're shooting. Now, another thing that I need to point out before we wrap up this part is the fact that the Omni controller is virtually limitless in any practical way uh, as far as shots go. We've all been living with the 999 shot limits on the in-camera and uh, you know remote intervalometers but with five spaces uh, you can shoot what 99,999 shots. Uh, good luck finding cards that big. But it does give you the confidence and the ability to set uh, the number of shots 100 or 200 or 300 beyond where you think you're going to be in case there's a delay in the ship leaving, the ship arriving. You don't want to run out of um, shots two minutes or 100 frames before the boat finally leaves. Okay, enough. Uh, there's so much more I could go into, but that's got to be enough for now. I've already gone way over what I'd planned on. We'll be back soon with uh, a lot more on the tools we're using with the MoCo, like this small HD AC7, and some of the other tests we've done with it with, with a jib mount on it on a windy day, or creating false... Uh, foreground elements to enhance the effect of the shorter slide we have when we're using it at a four foot or this cool device we discovered at NAB uh, the VacuRack car mount system that fits the MoCo like a glove this is going to be really fun to play with but like I said enough for now I'm very pleased. I'm very impressed with the MoCo. I can't wait to see what the production version looks like with the firmware upgrade, uh, the more powerful motor, and uh, there's something else. Oh yeah, the quick releases for the belt. Go check it out for yourself. Cinovate MoCo. Have fun.